everybody. We advertised that we would in fact be open after Easter and here we all are. Fantastic. I want to welcome you as we do each time to remind you that no matter where you come from or where you're going, no matter what you believe or what you doubt, no matter what you feel or cannot feel today, no matter whom you love, you are welcome and safe in this place to be met by God, God who loves you and God who knows you and God who has a great desire for a deeper relationship with each of us. And it is our fervent hope and prayer that our time together in song, at the table, and in, in the word will bring us closer to God and the people of God. Welcome to St. Andrews.
together on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer. Not yet. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. With you. And also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have. Oops, that's the wrong service. Try again. <laughs> Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they possess by profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Here ends the reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 133. Please read responsibly. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. Upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, 
life forevermore. A reading from the book of 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous And he is the atoning sacrifice for us, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where, where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, he was called the twin, 
one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark on, of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet, yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I've got books today. I've started. It is. In an Episcopal church. Settle down. And I've started liking to read as they're reading, the, especially from the the gospel. I've started to like to read it from the book because there is something powerful about finding it in the book and not just on this piece of paper because you're going to throw away that piece of paper, right? That piece of paper has very little sacred value over the long course. How many of you even take it home? There are a handful. How many of you read it again? There's a couple. Bam in the back, she does. She's got her hand way up. But a lot of us don't because we don't realize what we're reading. And I think that's important. You remember last week. Y'all remember last week? It was only a week ago. We were here and we were talking about Jesus' resurrection. You've heard of that. We call it Easter. And we we're a lot of people here. A lot of people. Twice as many as we have today. Lots of people. And anyway, in that moment, I said that we are here celebrating something that no one on the day took note of and believed that Jesus was risen. They were all looking for the dead body of Jesus. So we talked about that a little bit in Bible study on Wednesday night. And one of my friends said, you know, I like to believe I'd be there with my cup of coffee saying, welcome back, dude. And I was like, well, two problems with that. First of all, coffee wasn't even a thing for another 500 years, so nobody had a cup of coffee on that day. 
first thing. That, that's a big rabbit hole when you start preaching. You're like, oh, I wonder when coffee was. Anyway, um, but the other is we don't believe because Jesus told us it was going to happen. We believe because John was successful. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. We believe because we have the story. Because we're on the other side of the resurrection. And we've had 2,000 years to, to meditate on it and to think about it and to be taught these words over and over and over again. Because I don't know about you, but have you ever taken a test on information you've been given once or twice and you failed the test because you didn't remember all the details? But if you hear the story over and over and over again, you remember them? It's like when I was a, when I was a young person and I used to get in my car and drive around town and listen to a song on the radio. Did you all do that? So I would have, um, this was back in the day, so we had eight-track tapes, which, by the way, your car would eat regularly. Um, and we'd listen to the same song over and over and over again until you knew all the words. And then when you hear that song 40 years later, you not only know the words, you know all the key changes, and you know, the, you know all the things of the song because you know it deeply, not because you heard it once or twice, but because you've heard it over and over again. That's how we came to have such faith. That's how we've come to understand who Jesus is. Because, and, and it's not personal to just one person. It is the fact that the church has been talking about these stories for 2,000 years, and we teach them that way. That's how we know the story. That's why we believe. And Thomas didn't, and the, 12, and the 10 didn't, or whatever. The, yeah, it would have been 10. Um, they didn't, not because they were dumb. Not because they um, were disbelieving. They were traumatized, so I think you can go into a lot of PTSD kind of stuff around these guys. But really because it was new. And nobody knew what it meant yet. Nobody knew what it meant yet. I mean, Jesus goes into a locked room. That's a little different, isn't it? I don't know many people who can just be in a locked room. And the door is locked because the people there are afraid. They're afraid. And again, I'm going to say it every time we come into it. Fear of the Jews is a bad, bad expression. It makes us think that all the Jews are terrible people running around trying to kill people, which leads to a lot of anti-Semitism, and we've got to get rid of that in our head. They were afraid of the Judeans who were in charge who had just killed Jesus. It's a small group of people working with the Romans. That's what they're afraid of. And they're in this place, and somebody comes into a locked room without a key, and is there, and he says, what does he say? He says, peace be with you. And there's no evidence that they have any reaction to that at all except. Then he shows them their, the wounds, and they start to realize who he is and what he is. He helps them. He, 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 brought, he brings them into the story. He says, see, it's me. He proves who he is. So they're no better than Thomas later because they still needed the proof too, Right? We all need an experience of God before we really understand God that, or even start to. Then he says, not a unique new thing. He goes back to his first greeting. Peace be with you, because now they can receive his peace. Now they can receive it because now they've experienced his presence. Their anxiety has been lowered. You ever walk into a room and, and, the, and people are busy doing something and you immediately try to burst out with your news and nobody listens to you? at all because they're not they're not in that place with you yet right you need to get their attention you need to you need to say hello you might need to listen to what's going on in the room before they'll even hear you he did that and then he gives them the gift of the holy spirit after he's calmed them down after he's invited them to participate in his journey after he's become part of the group again and they walk through this now, you and I are invited into this relationship. We're, we're invited to be one of those disciples, to be one of the people for whom this book was written so that we may come to believe. That is an invitation to us. And I've known a whole lot of people 
who believe in Jesus kind of as an intellectual assent. Kind of like you might believe that that piano exists. It doesn't change their lives much, but they acknowledge that it exists. So we can all agree that the piano is there, right? But, you know, unless somebody goes up and plays it, it doesn't matter. So how has our relationship with Jesus changed from an intellectual assent into a relationship of belonging, a relationship of meaning, a relationship that changes our lives, changes the way we live? Because if we just say we believe in Jesus but don't live any differently from anybody else around us, then we're functionally atheists. It doesn't matter. Jesus did not go to the cross for us to live just like everybody else lived. To do nothing more than to say, oh yeah, good, there's a God, great. We, as Episcopalians, our way of describing this, this changed life is found in our baptismal covenant. That's why I have the prayer book up here. And when we, when we, we did it at the early service last week, but we didn't do it at the main service, so I wanted to bring this up today. The first thing we do when we ask people if they want to be Christians... If they want to, to follow God, we tell them that they first have to turn their back on some things. We call it renunciation. Do you renounce Satan and the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Now, I don't, haven't run into many people who have trouble renouncing Satan. That's a pretty easy, that's a pretty easy buy-in. And people say, I renounce them. It gets a little trickier with the second one. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the people of God? Now, I come from a long line of Baptist people who would have said yes as they continue to enslave people because they didn't notice. They didn't notice that what they were doing did not, in fact, live into their promise. But we're called to live differently. We're called to notice other people, to see that they're there. And to live in a way that doesn't make them into commodities or products or only cares about them if they're being um, useful to society. All those things. And so we say, do we renounce the, the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy? And we say, we renounce them. Then I've always liked this one best because I think it's the hardest. Do you renounce the sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Now we're not talking about what anybody else does. Just you just you are you willing to turn around the uh, from the things that you know your little pet sins that you keep right close to your heart because they're not so bad <laughs> but they keep you from the love of god what do they do they keep you from caring about other people because you're too busy focused on yourself perhaps they keep you from caring about other people because you've got a checklist of things that people have to do before you consider them okay they have to vote the right way they have to have your opinion about vaccines they have to uh, uh, feel how you feel about the environment one way or the other can you care about all the people or do you have these little pet sins you keep up judgment not willing to forgive all those things we do and we all lie and say I renounce them it's not really a lie it's an it's a it's a statement of intent that we have to work into because it's hard work, my friends. It is hard work to renounce the sins that draw you from the love of God. And then when you renounce stuff that's not enough, you have to turn toward something, right? So we say, do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? And people say, I do with no reservation. Savior, yeah, I'm, I'm good with Savior. Good. And then just as it became harder with the renunciation, the, the other side becomes a little harder too. It says, do you turn to Christ and, ex uh, no, do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Trust. Do you trust that Jesus forgives you? Because I have, I tell you, I have had some sad experiences in hospitals where people were at the end of their lives and suddenly they're afraid of something they did want. They're afraid of what they've done or what they've said or what they've felt, and they don't necessarily trust that they are forgivable. Do you trust that Jesus can and will forgive you? 
Do you trust that when Jesus said, what I have done can bring you to everlasting life, do you trust that? Because that's what we're called to turn to and to believe and to live into. I can do things. I can be a good person, not because I'm perfect, but because I'm trusting in Jesus and Jesus has done that good work. Trust is, is an interesting word there. And then we say, do you promise to follow and obey. Well, we don't like the word obey very much, do we? How many of you are really, that's like your favorite word, obedience? <laughs> for yourself, not for your kids or, or your spouse or anything, but for you. Obedience. We like it in, in, in terms of dogs. We like obedient dogs. We like obedient children, especially other people's. Oh my goodness, we like other people's obedient children more than we can say. And many people really like obedient spouses. Um, but self, obedience to Jesus. And what does Jesus say? If you love me, you will follow my commandments. And Jesus' commandments are, as we know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you spend all your time and all your money and all your energy on yourself, then clearly you'd have nothing left for your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself means that you take your neighbor into account. So those are the questions we ask. And then we ask everybody, and then we renew our thing, and then we do the baptismal covenant, which we did. We said the creed. It's basically the same creed. It's the apostles rather than the, the Nicene. Just quick, do you know how to tell the apostles versus the Nicene creed know the first word? Nicene starts with we, and the apostle starts with I. Just, you know, if you're going through and somebody starts with I, you're in, you're in the apostles. If they start with we, you're in the, the Nicene. But the idea is we, the church, believe these things. And then we go to the creed, and then we ask five questions. And these are refining questions. These are promises we make. So if you want to know, how do I do this thing of, of following Jesus, here are five things. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? And you say, I will with God's help. Go ahead. Thank you. So what does that mean? It literally means you'll go to church. You will continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship because that's the first thing that the church did. It's not me and Jesus alone against the world personal. It's about being in a community. It has been community since the beginning, since the early church. From Jesus called together 12 people. He didn't go to their houses and have little 12 Bible studies. They came together to be a community, to support one another, to be there for each other. We read this wonderful thing from Acts. Um, we started off today with everybody gave up all their stuff. Now, you know that lasted about a minute and a half because that works really well if Jesus does come back in a week. Then if you've given up all your property, you're fine. If everybody's given up all their property and Jesus is delayed for, say, like 2,000 years, it's not a good place to be because nobody has any property and you've all sold it all. Um, just saying. The unity, yes. Being together. Being together is good. Taking care of each other is good. We continue in the apostles. We continue with breaking of the bread. We come to communion. Again, something you cannot do at home. And you continue in the prayers. Praying all the time. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, I love that word, whenever, we do not assume anybody's not going to. Whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Nobody's kicked out. You repent and you return. That's, we expect it. We all do it, some, some in big ways, some in small ways, but repent and return to the Lord. Repent and return. That's a huge part of what Jesus calls us to do. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? And you say, I will with God's help. So, what, you know, by word, of course, we know it's, it's in our prayers and it's in and saying things, but it's, but it's also in feeding people and treating them with respect. It's in, in, in housing people. It's in um, 
listening to people. It's in being in relationship. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. That one's so tough. Oh my goodness, that one's tough. It's tough because not all of our neighbors agree with us. Not all of our neighbors live the way we wish they would. Not all of our neighbors are easy to get along with. Y- y- y'all have not noticed that, have you? Yeah. To seek Christ in all persons, always when you look at them, seeing that they are created in the image of God, no matter how different they feel, no matter how foreign they seem, No matter how, whatever your judgment thing is, everybody has their own. That Christ is in there, in their creation. And finally, will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? And you say, those include a lot of people. People in prison every human being. People in in foreign countries that you you don't like because you've been told on the news that everybody from that country is bad, every human being. People who uh, go to a different church or have a different religion, every human being. Every human being treated with with dignity and respect. Those are the marks that we look for when we say we're going to follow Jesus. It is not about saying, God bless you, every time you open your mouth. It is not about never sharing a joke. It is not about being serious and pious and wearing black all the time. Though the Puritans seemed to think that was the way to do it. We don't mind joy. We don't mind laughter. We don't mind frivolity. As long as it is done in a way that is respectful of people and loves people and supports people, our friends, our family, our neighbors. And we live differently because we follow Jesus and trust that Jesus was right when he told us that this is the right way to live, that this is the way of abundant life, that this is the way to joy. May God bless us as we greet the risen Lord with our hallelujahs and remember that God so loved the world that he came to be with us. Thank you. Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
standing or kneeling as you're able. Let us pray together the prayers of the people found on page 392. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Peter, our diocesan bishop, for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. We pray this morning for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We lift up those on our parish prayer list. Henrietta, Stefan, Chuck, Hank, Pam, Dominic, Mary, Jason, Debbie and Jim, John, Jim Kay, Nicole, Patrick, Joan, Ruby, Sabrina, Scott, Sergio, Glad, Kathy M, Anna, Winifred and Sylvan, Lester and Ronnie, Kim, Susan, Robert, Karen, Janet, John, Joyce and Gary, Rana, Barbara, Ann, Rick, Dave, Julie, Leslie, Allison, Mary Lou, Linda, Gary, Phil, Patty, Jean, Michael, Jim, Carol Jean, Barbara, Natalie, Deacon Pat. Are there others? Pray that the needs of all those people are met. We pray for our companion diocese, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Madagascar, Toliar. We especially lift up Haiti. We ask that some stability would be returned to that country and to their government. We need to pray for peace in our world. We intervene in that Palestinian and Israeli situation, help them to find a path to peace. Be with the people of Ukraine as they defend their homeland. Help us to find some peace on the streets of this nation, Lord, and stop the terrible violence we have in this country. We also pray for all those that are affected by natural disasters. Hear us, Lord. We give you thanks for the blessings of this life. We thanks for this beautiful day, for this chance to worship you in a free land. Thanks for this parish church, for our congregation. We thanks for the lives of Mark Bragel, Lisa Marie Arensabia, Bob Wells, Tom Green, who celebrate birthdays this week. Thanks, Lord, for all the blessings that you bring into our lives. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We, praise we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We especially pray today for Anne Pascone, who passed away this past week. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you, you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
It is good to see you, everybody. How are you? Welcome back to the second celebration of, of, of a Sunday and the great 50 days of Easter. I was over having breakfast at uh, Two J's and I, and I said to the, fam the people I always see there, I said, well, happy Easter. And they said, well, wasn't that last week? And I said, it's 50 days. <laughs> and uh, and the, when the woman said, well, now my granddaughter, if I say that, my granddaughter want an egg hunt every day. I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> if that's what Easter means, then celebrate for 50 days. We do have those calendars like we did for Lent, where we had the great, the 40 days. The, we have those in the back, too, for, for Easter. Um, so get one on the way out if you don't get one. Is there anybody here for the first time? We have somebody up front who's here for the first time. We're just our ushers. Are We're not going to make you stand to give your whole testimony, don't worry. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, we got, oh, thank you, there we go, okay. It's good to see you, glad you're here with us today. Um, after the service, just to, so you know, you're welcome to come in through that door right there where it says exit. Well, through there we have uh, Frizzell Hall where we have uh, coffee hours. So there's coffee and tea and usually something to nosh on and, and you're welcome to be part of that. We would love it if you did. Um, tomorrow, is our Nehemiah Action for Peace at the Palm Beach Convention Center at 7.30. Now, we are hoping to have a large turnout of people because we need our elected officials to know that we are serious. Now, does this mean that we're going to win everything? No. Does it mean that they're always going to say yes? No. What it does mean is they're going to know that we care about this, we want them to continue working on it, and if, if we don't come to a yes now, we're not going away. We're going to keep working, so we need to have people show up. Now, Andrea can probably get you a ticket. Now, the goals of the, the joy of the ticket is that you don't have to fill one out when you get there, because all you have to do is hand it to them when you come in. Otherwise, you have to stand in this line and write down your name and all that stuff. So, I hope you'll get. I hope you'll come. I hope you'll get a ticket from Andrea, and uh, we can. Yes, ma'am. It's for the Nehemiah action at the uh, convention center on Monday, tomorrow, where we're going to... Uh, they need the ticket so that they know who came. Oh, okay. So they know who came, yes. So, uh, but we're going to meet here at 6, if you want to. Come down together. We'll have some pizza together, and then we'll get in cars and go down so we don't have to take all the cars, especially for people who don't like to drive so much at night. And... Uh, and, or you can meet us there, and it starts at 7.30. So I hope that you come. Oh, my goodness, we hope you come. Um, April has something she'd like to tell you about. On Saturday at 9 o'clock, um, I'll be doing a training for Eucharistic visitors. And what that means is people who go out from the church to uh, give communion to those who cannot come to church. So it could be in their homes, it could be in a hospital, it could be at a rehab center, but it's, it's the people who want communion, but they're unable to come out and get it. And like I said, it starts at 9 o'clock. It'll only be a couple hours, and, um, and then we can rock and roll. Thank you. I just Andrew? wanted to add to your announcement, free parking at the convention. Oh, Andrea wants to make sure every, nobody is set aside by parking. There is free parking at the convention center, paid for by peace. So please come to that. And, and there's free parking here next Saturday, too. <laughs> Lots of free parking. Um, let's see. I am in the midst of forming a stewardship committee. Everybody excited? <laughs> Good, I heard some yeses. Because one of the things, stewardship has two pieces, and they, they, we tend to focus on the one. The one is, without people's giving, we don't have money to run our programs. And that includes all of our programs, our, our, our outreach, everything. But the other is, and it came from our, if you've heard it in the sermon, uh, loving others as yourself, it is a spiritual practice to give. And if we don't learn how to give, if we don't give... Um, to support the work of God, then we're not living into that. So it's a two, it's a two-tiered thing, and uh, the stewardship committee is going to be working on ways of of communicating that and working with it so that people 
people can understand it better and know what it means. Um, so if you're interested in that, please talk to me. Um, there are other announcements in the bulletin for you to, to see, but one of them, this important one here, is this piece of paper that says, for your groups at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Do you see that? Now, if you got my email, then you know what it's about. If you didn't get my email, come and talk to me and we'll put you on our email distribution list. Um, the foyer groups are, are groups of people that get, that get together every month and share a meal. And this particular group that each, each group will be set for six months, so you get to know some new people. And we have six months starting about in May for, for the people who are here year-round, and then we do it again at the time of the year when, when the snowbirds come back so that they can be part of that. And sometimes people do it in people's homes, sometimes they do it at restaurants, sometimes um, they meet on Friday night, sometimes they meet on Saturday night, and all of that is on the back for you to fill out. And then there's a basket in the back to put your, your form in. And, and I have to tell you this story. When I was down in Miami at the church I served down there, St. Luke's, very first day, I'm in the back, and the lady next to me was on the, on the committee that, that called me in, and she's a Eucharistic minister, and she's been there forever. And I saw somebody, and I said, what's that lady's name? She said, I don't know. And I said, oh, is she new? Oh, no. She just didn't know her name. Because we come to church so often with people, and we don't get to know our names. We don't get to know each other. The foyer group is a way of making some friends so that you're coming to church isn't just about nodding to people you see on Sunday. Are there some of you all who just kind of nod at people you see on Sunday and don't know many names? Yeah, this is to end that. So that you actually know who your brothers and sisters, your siblings in Christ are. So I'm hoping you will fill that out and turn that in. And I think that's, is that all I needed to do today? Christy has something to say. Thank you. Um, you can see that the weather has not been kind to our Easter flowers. And so I think today is the day that we are going to have to undecorate the church. We can't it's, do that today because the, the um, Daughters of the oh, King are meeting. Oh, okay. Well, the one thing I was going to say is if you donated to the Easter flowers and you'd like to take one of these little uh, hydrangeas or lilies home with you, you can certainly pick that up on your way out and then we'll do the other undecorating at another time. Well, thank you for saying that because I did want to say again, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you to all the people who helped make Easter possible because there were so many people. There were flower arrangers. There were people who cleaned and straightened. There were people who folded bulletins, loads of bulletins. There were people who came and sang at 6 o'clock in the morning. There were people who came and sang and, and directed them at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I'm just so grateful. It, 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 the church is beautiful, and I appreciate all the hard work that went into that. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Continue together on page 372 of your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. and power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior, incarnate by the Virgin Mary. I mean, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent his Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the blessed mother of Christ Mary, with the prophets, with the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, 
with Saint Andrew and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have one thing I have to say before the blessing. As you know, with our welcome, we are so glad everybody's here today. And whether you're here for the first time or whether you've been here, coming here for 40 years, we are glad you are here. But I am especially overjoyed today to welcome Barbara Hatzel back into the community. She has been out. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing a lot. And Dominic Savini, we are so glad to see you this morning. Thank God for your presence among us. There are so many here who, who have come and go for various reasons, but both of these have been, been absent from us for quite a while, and so welcome home. My friends, life is short, and we do not know how much time we have to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to show mercy. Shower abundant hospitality on friend and stranger alike, and may God who first loved you God whose property is always to have mercy, and God who invites us all with infinite hospitality to share eternity bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
go forth into the world remembering it's because he lives that we say, Alleluia! Alleluia!